Welcome to our review on Newton's first law. So one of the things we do need to know is what Newton's laws actually state. And Newton's first law of motion states, an object will continue to stay at rest or move with uniform velocity unless a force acts on it. So in order to change speed or the direction of an object, we need a resultant force. If the resultant force was zero, then the speed or direction of the object won't change, because if there's no resultant force, there can be no change to either speed or direction. It just carries on moving or not moving at the same speed and in the same direction. A word that you might see used in association with this is the word inertia, which is a measure of how difficult it is to change an object's velocity. And what we're really looking at in Newton's first law of motion is inertia, because what we're actually saying is that a moving object keeps moving and a stationary object doesn't move unless, of course, there's something that's going to unbalance those forces. If we've got an object that's moving at a steady speed, it's got a resultant force of zero because the speed and the direction isn't changing. The last thing we need to consider is this term equilibrium. So when we're talking about equilibrium, we're talking about where the resultant force is zero. So the forces have cancelled each other out. That means that the object is either going to keep moving at the steady speed or it's going to remain stationary if it was already stationary. So I've given you two examples on the right of the free body diagrams we could see for these. The top one is a car. So we've got the force of the ground on the car upwards and the force of the earth on the car downwards. And those are the same size force in opposite directions. Therefore, resultant force is zero. Same thing with the feather. We've got the force of the air on the feather and the force of the earth on the feather. Again, because those are balanced, they're in equilibrium. So our feather is going to fall at a constant speed. Hopefully at the end of this video you can recall Newton's first law, you can apply Newton's first law to explain the motion of an object moving with uniform velocity, and you can apply Newton's first law to explain the motion of an object when the speed and or direction have changed.